In this video, we're going to continue topic 5.4, looking at um, global or absolute extrema, and we're going to look at example 5. So in this example, um, first of all, in the left-hand column, be aware that if it is ever asked what extrema is, then they are asking for the y value of the extrema, asking for the biggest number, not where it happened. So it's actually asking for the maximum value. So we're looking for the y, the biggest y value um, of the function over the interval. So we know we're gonna go ahead and take a first derivative of this to find critical numbers to begin with. So that would be 12x squared minus 6x minus 18. I'm gonna set that equal to zero. I do know a great, notice a greatest common factor of 6, so I'm going to pull that out first. So I get 2x squared minus x minus 3 equals 0. Um, it looks like I would have to get out a good old magic x and box. So I have two numbers that multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 1 would be uh, negative 3 and positive 2. Because I have a leading coefficient, I need to use the box. So I'm going to put the 2x squared in the top left, negative 3 in the bottom right, followed by a negative 3x and a 2x. Then I ask myself what times what is 2, which is 2 and 1. 2 divides into this 2 instead of into the 3. So we put the 1x on the side. So 1x divides negative 3x negative 3 times. 2x divides 2x once, and we check 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. So I've got 6 times 2x minus 3 times x plus 1 equals 0. I use zero product property to break up all my factors and set them equal to 0. This one doesn't get us anything. We're going to add the 3 and divide by 2, and then we're going to subtract the 1. So I know my candidates are going to be the 0 and the 2. Ooh. And check this out. This one is not in between 0 and 2, so I don't have to use it. And so my only other candidate is 3 halves. I know I wrote a little too big, so I'm going to do my, my table over here to the right. So I'm going to pick my x values, which are 0, 3 halves, and 2. And I have to plug these back into the original function f of x. So I'm plugging into this. So when I plug 0 into that, I get 4 times 0 cubed minus 3 times 0 squared minus 18 times 0, which is going to be 0. Then I'm going to plug in the 3 halves. So 4 times 3 halves cubed minus 3 times 3 halves squared minus 18 times 3 halves. Okay. So this is going to give me, and I know this is going a little bit out and stretching out here. So we've got 4 times 3 cubed is 27, 2 cubed is 8, minus 3 times 9 fourths, minus, let's see, 2 goes into, actually I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and multiply it out. 3 times 18 is negative 54 halves. Um, I'm doing that on purpose, and I'm going to keep going to the right. Um, let's see, 4 goes into 8 twice, so now I have 27 halves. Um, let's see, 3 times 9 would be negative 27 fourths, and then minus 54 halves. I probably shouldn't have reduced as much as I did. I'm going to have to make these into fourths, so I'm multiplying by 2. So 27 is going to be 54 fourths minus 27 fourths minus... 108 fourths. So when I add that all up, I end up with negative 85 fourths. And I'm sorry, you needed more room for this problem. All right, we're going to now put in a 2. So we've got 4 times 2 cubed minus 3 times 2 squared minus 18 times 2. All right, so when I do that, I get 2 cubed is 8 times 4 is 32. 2 squared is 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. 2 times negative 18 would be negative 36. And when I add all that up, I get negative 16. We are looking for the maximum value. So I need the biggest number. And check this out. 
This one, there was a negative. This one was a negative. So my maximum value is actually zero. It's a coincidence we've gotten zero on the last two answers. That doesn't normally happen. So f of x has a max value of zero.